Mic check, mic check, one, two, one, two. Mic check, one, two, one, two. Okay, whatever. We're just going to give this a shot here. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Angel Road Outdoors, the podcast. It's been a minute. It's been many, 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 many minutes. You know, I should have probably done the math before I said that. I've not put out an episode of Angel Road Outdoors, the podcast, since March 21st of this year. And the reason I haven't done that is I wanted to embark upon a fitness and well-being journey called 75 Hard. I did that, but in order to do that, I needed to just stop all the other stuff. And so I couldn't give any attention to trying to book people to be on the show. Um, I couldn't put any effort into like focusing on it at all. So I just stopped. Whatever. Who cares? This is just for fun anyway. So anyway, uh, I'm going to do it again. I love podcasting. I... I've done it for many, many, many years. My brother and I did one. I'm going to do it again. Whatever. He's going to be on. I just, I wanted to put this episode out because I had an, um, I had an experience on Monday the 16th that I wanted to talk about. And that experience includes me shooting one of my target bucks and only injuring him um, because I made a mistake. I made a big mistake and I figured it's, um, it's a good opportunity to discuss the whole entire scenario and what happened, um, why it happened, how it happened, and you know my thoughts on how I can ab- avoid that in the future. So it, uh, it starts with me picking up some private ground in southern Illinois this year uh, by way of lease and not really knowing anything about it and just thinking it's a good area looked like a good layout. It was affordable. And so I picked it up. I'm in Illinois all the time for work. And why not? What the hell? I'm, if, I'm, if I'm in Illinois, I might as well parlay that into some hunting. And so I've been doing that. I've been doing it a lot. And I picked up this property earlier in the year. And when I was in town for work, I had driven down, um, scouted the whole property, put out a bunch of trail cameras, picked up mm, three or four shooters one absolute giant that i haven't seen since july um he this seems like an i hate to say this um for anybody that lives in southern illinois or farming communities but this seems like an area where there are poachers and if you have it a vivid, if you have a vivid imagi- imagination or if you're even remotely creative i think you can imagine the type of area that this is but it just feels very poachy and so I would imagine that if I'm getting this deer on camera in daylight, so are other people. And this is the type of deer um, I'm saying causes people to do bad things or illegal things. But anyway, I haven't seen that monster since July. I imagine he is long gone. He'd probably be he'd probably be 180s, 190s. I mean, he was that big. Um, anyway, we are here in October. Um, I had a nice cold front come through over the weekend or the end of last week, um, 13th, 14th, something like that. Maybe it was either, it was even raining. And I think the weather down there was going to go from seventies, um, down to highs in the fifties. And so I made the decision, um, to drive down Saturday night, Saturday night, the 15th, no, the 14th. I drove down the night of the 14th after my nephew's birthday party. And I have set up my vehicle to sleep in my truck. I've got an inflatable air mattress. And I just was like, I'm going to sleep in a Walmart parking lot and just be at the property early because I didn't know, you know, I, I, my, my intentions were to, since I haven't actually sat there and seen deer move and I, half the cameras I had out there were, had been dead for months. So it was like, you know what, I'm just going to set up at the first morning, Sunday morning, the 15th in one of the areas that I had seen that giant. I had seen him moving mid morning. Listen, I understand that was a long time ago, but it that was the most recent information I had was from July. So that's the best I could do was at least set up there and see what was happening. So I walked in that morning, uh, set up in my saddle and saw nothing. And that's okay. I was fine with that. I realized that patterns have shifted since July, but I could at least put batteries back in that camera and say to myself, I at least sat in the last spot I saw him and I didn't see anybody today. So no big deal. Uh, I moved on, went back, um, regrouped, 
before the afternoon. And um, prior to going out in the afternoon, I did some additional uh, property scouting. So I, sc- I scouted all the way to the back of the property, adjusted a couple cameras based on some fresh sign, that being rubs and scrapes and actual uh, big big buck tracks that I could see in the creek bottom, in the sand and the mud. Um, freshened up a couple scrapes, put some cameras on some rubs, replaced some batteries, walked all the way to the back because the back side of the property abuts some corn and um, just decided that my best bet for that evening um, was to set up on the bean field because it still had standing beans. I had been seeing shooters um, in front of that camera up and all the way up until the, within the last week. So one good, nice big eight point had been um, passing through there most frequently, very close, like within, I think one set of photos had him either in shooting time or within like five minutes of it. And then the other ones were at least within an hour. So I was, so first of all, the, the within the hour shooting time, um, he had been coming from the West wrong, the East and the East is where the corn is. And so I, that's the whole reason I scouted back there. It was to see if I could maybe get in a, in a spot where, um, I was catching him leaving food, you know, earlier than shooting time, um, causing him to pass by that camera after shooting time on his way to wherever betting was. And so, um, whatever I set up on the field, I saw a bunch of deer that night, but this field is also where I have every single day had the neighbor's dogs on camera. And that's one of my biggest complaints about um, leasing a property sight unseen is you have no clue what you're getting yourselves into. And of course, when you read their website, it highly encourages you to visit the location prior to agreeing to anything. Well, guess what? Bitch, this is seven and a half hours away and I don't have the time to do that, to visit it. And um, potentially, if I don't visit it, you have that opportunity, that potential where you could lose the lease because someone else is just going to do it. Um and who's to say that that day that I visited, the dogs would be out there. So it's just a risk you take. Um, but it's very unfortunate that this exact corner of the beans I have a camera and there's dogs on the camera every single day in the nine o'clock hour in the morning. And that is fucking annoying. So anyway, I'm out there. I sit there till dark. I have a bunch of does come out of a little near, uh, kind of a shallow draw um, in the middle of the field. And, um, they just kind of mill around in the beans a hundred yards away and just eat and whatever, whatever, whatever. So I, no big deal. Um, and then like 15 minutes before dark, um, I can hear like the thud, 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 and there's a, there's a deer hauling ass through the beans back into the woods and hot on his tails is one of the neighbor's fucking dogs. So, so that blows. So 15 minutes before dark, I get down cause the fucking dogs are run in the field. And, um, you know, what do you do? I don't know exactly whose dogs they are. I mean, the, the house that is right next door looks like an absolute meth house. So I ain't knocking on that door. And, um, I just don't know where those dogs belong. Whatever. I don't, I don't care. I'm not, the deer still move through there. I'm not going to cause any problems. I could raise hell, but I can promise you I'm never doing this lease again. Um, I'm not renewing it. It's, it's bullshit that I would have to pay to have dogs trespass on this property. And that's just the way this neighborhood is. Like I said, it feels poachy. So again, use your imagination. You can imagine who lives around here. There's on the other corner are two hound dogs that literally bark all day. They bark all day long at every person, every animal, every car. And so I actually brought my mountain bike down because I thought I'm going to have to park and li- and ride my bike like probably at least two miles in a loop to avoid those stupid dogs just to get in on the backside. I ended up doing something different where instead of looping around, I just walked in earlier. Like I just got there earlier. I set up earlier and I sat in my stand longer than I normally would, which turned out to work out in my favor. Um, I just couldn't execute. So that brings us Saturday night, sit the field, see some does. Don't get any shots. I'm not shooting does anyway. I'm looking for a big buck. And so I get down, I collect all my gear, I I tear down the point five and the sticks, and I I walk through the I walk the edge of the bean field over to my truck, and uh, so this is probably like six forty five, six fifty five, seven o'clock, something like that. 
as I'm doing this, I'm walking west to my vehicle. And then on camera at this exact same time, this this there was a buck in the middle of the property hitting a scrape in front of a camera whilst I was leaving the field. So I don't know how he came in. I have an idea because I ended up sitting here the next morning. I have an idea how he entered the camera frame. Um, and anyway, he was he would have been downwind to me up 150 yards. So he probably never winded me. And he never spooked. And then I didn't learn that until I got in my truck. I just thought that was interesting. Um, so I head back to the Walmart parking lot and I curl up for a sweet, sweet slumber under the horrific lights uh, of the Walmart parking lot. And uh, I decide I, I, I knew where I was going to hunt the next morning. I was going to hunt this scrape where the buck was uh, as I was exiting the field, just because it was the, one of the other places I had seen the big bucks. There was obviously a big buck cruising that night um, while I was leaving the field. That's where I'm hunting in the morning. So I go to bed. I get up early. I get there. Um, and I talk myself out of hunting that spot, which is a typical brat move. I change my mind last minute, which is stupid. So I decide I'm going to take the uh, two track on this property all the way to the back corner, closer to the corn, to, again, to see if I can cut these deer off leaving food headed to bed i get all the way at the at the back side of the property and change my mind again <laughs> again typical brett fashion i i'm so like anxious and unwilling to commit that i change my mind well at this point i'm soaked um it's a long hike it's uh and i'm obnoxiously um indecisive so uh i am now Cutting it close to an hour before shooting time, but I decide to go to my initial stand location, which is the scrape that the buck was on the night before. I find a nice big set of three trees to climb up in between with my saddle, so uh, no big deal. I'm there. I'm set up in like 10 minutes. I got like 50 minutes till shooting time, maybe 45 minutes till shooting time. Plenty of time to quiet down. I get all set up, yet I'm annoyed. Like I'm annoyed that I can't make up my mind. I'm annoyed that I'm not really where I wanted to be. I'm annoyed that I'm where I wanted to be, but not where I wanted to be. I'm annoyed that I don't know what is around me. I can't see anything. I haven't ranged anything. I don't know my distances. I'm just, I'm kind of frustrated. I didn't sleep well. And so I just instantly start talking down to myself. Like you're such an idiot. You're not a good hunter. You don't know what you're doing. This is, you're such a waste of your time. You know, you're down here. You you should have sat where you would just walk to. You'd have had plenty of time. Whatever. I, just how it goes, man. I, I I think other people probably get like that where they talk down to themselves. They start to get super negative. Usually when that happens, something good happens. And I would say within the, a half an hour, I can hear deer movement. And I don't know where it's coming from. And then... And then I realize it's coming from in front of me, but I don't really know what's in front of me just because I don't really know the area that well. Uh, this is only my third sit, um, but whatever. It's uh, 6.15 maybe. I can hear some cr some breaking of sticks. Obviously, there's deer moving. Um, there's just a difference between when a deer breaks a stick as it's walking versus when like a, a squirrel does it or or something else. You just You just know. And, um, it's starting to get light enough where, you know, I can see my, I can see my hands and my code and I can see my bow and I can see the camera and I can see, you know, I can see the trees that I'm hanging and I can see the grass below me, but it's still very, 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 very dark. And, uh, shooting time is at 638. So again, we're talking 20 minutes or so probably until shooting time. And, um, that's the only stick I hear crack. And then, you know, maybe in the next five or 10 minutes, I can hear another stick crack and I can tell that something is getting closer to me. And again, I don't know exactly where this noise is coming from in relation to what I can see now. Again, it's slowly getting brighter. It's still really like I have my um, I have my illuminated pins turned on. I have the camera turned on. I have my release all set on my my bow. Um, I leave my thumb release on the D loop just because that's how I that's how I roll. Uh, because with one good eye, 
uh, my depth perception is a little off. So trying to, in the heat of the moment, attach your release to your D loop is troubling. And so I just leave it on there. I know some people disagree with that, but that's just how it goes. So we're talking, now we're talking probably 620, 625. Um, there's some additional rustling in the leaves. I can tell that there are deer moving in my direction. And I'm very excited at this point. I don't, you know, I don't know if it's a buck or a doe or a fat fucking raccoon, a coyote. I have no idea, but I'm in, I'm of the opinion that this is a deer or deers moving in my direction. Yes, deers. And so I am very alert at this point. I'm also well aware that I can't see shit. And for anybody that doesn't know this already, I only have one good eye. My right eye I injured a couple years ago. It sees, but sees poorly. It sees it. it, My, the vision of my right eye is, is as if you are underwater in a pool trying to watch television. It's just blurry as hell. So it screws things up. So I'm left eye dominant. And it just isn't great. And I've got my glasses on, which is very helpful, but I still can't see well. And I know that something's getting closer. So now we're talking probably five minutes before shooting time. So we're probably 6.30, 6.32, 6.33, 6.34, 6.35. Th- whatever this is, is right in front of me. And by right in front of me, I'm, we're talking 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 yards, somewhere, somewhere very close. I can hear the, the bushes shaking. I never hear what I hear people refer to as antlers in the bushes or hitting branches. Like, I don't think I know what that sounds like. Um, and maybe I do. I just don't realize it. But I know that there is something moving of substantial size in front of me. And I'm going to end up seeing this thing if it takes till daylight. And right around 645... I am well aware that it is shooting time, but I'm also very aware that I can't see shit still. I'm deep in the woods. There's still plenty of canopy on these trees. The sun has not gotten, I mean, it's 30 minutes still before sunrise, which is legal shooting time, but it is not up enough for me to see well. Um, It's still very, very, very blue gray, which is tough for me to see at. Even with probably two good eyes, I I couldn't see it at that point. But I can now see movement in the the shrubs in front of me. Keep in mind, I've not yet ranged anything. It's been too dark. It's even too dark at this point for me to range anything. But I can just see, I can see the edge of the bushes and I can see that there's nothing in front of me. Like there's no overhanging limbs. I'm tucked in this three tree crotch. Um, I can see some dead trees where they're, they're like broken off in half. I can see the edge of the, tr- the shrubs, the um, brows, and I can see the deer moving. I can see its shoulders. I can see its legs. And then he steps into an opening and lifts his head up to hit a, to, to either smell the overhanging branches. I don't recall seeing a scrape there. And I see a mass of tines, white tines, beyond, either to the ears or beyond the ears, it looks like he's beyond the ears, but I was very excited, very white in color. And I knew at that moment, this is a shooter. I'm, not, I'm unaware of who it was at the time. Uh, I do know now, but I was unaware at the time. All I knew was those are big antlers. I'm shooting this buck. This is exactly what I've worked for. I have put in the effort to put myself in a position to have a buck come in. I'm He is... He is upwind of me. He has no idea I'm there. It's first light. It's shooting time. I. It is quiet. He has no clue I'm here. This is everything I have worked for. Everything. And he, he lifts his head up. I see the antlers. I make a decision that I'm shooting this deer. I grab my bow. I look. I close my right eye. And I try to see. And I can't see shit. I can't see the ring on my sight. I can see my illuminated pins, no problem. I know they're set at the top pins. So this, again, this is my first year using, maybe not again. I tried to make an Instagram post, but it didn't work. This is my first year shooting a um, single pin double stack sight. So it is a single stack of pins, and the, the top one is green, and it's at, it's at, when it's all the way dialed up, it's at 20. The second one is orange or red, and it is 30. And then I can adjust that dial, and then the bottom 
the floating pin is what adjusts to the, the the distances on the dial. So it's it's at 20 to 30. I can tell that just based on what I can see at this point, it is not beyond 30, but I also don't feel like it's close enough to be 20. So I make uh, an educated guess that it is in between the two. And so I, I, I draw back. It's again, I'm so fucking excited that this is happening. I don't even hit record on the fucking camera. I open the door on the camera like the viewer and I never hit record. I was in such a hurry to get this done that I never hit record. And therein lies the problem. I was in too much of a hurry. Grab my bow, draw it back, try to see the deer. Can't see shit. He is he is head on at this point. It's very dark still. It is legal shooting time. It's probably 645, between 645 and 650. I am at full draw, and I can't see the deer who is in head on at this point. And he slowly uh, puts his head down and quarters to me. So he, he goes from head on to a hard quartering two, and I am... I'm taking my head away from the bow and my eyes off the string, the peep, to try and figure out where this buck is because I just can't get him in the ring. And again, being in too much of a hurry is the whole problem here. And so, yes, I'm making a lot of mistakes. I'm making a lot of mistakes because I'm making hasty decisions unnecessarily. And in hindsight, I see all of that now. I put him, you know, again, I move my head away from the peep. I, I identify the deer as hard quartering too, but but not so hard that I'm concerned. And so I put, I split the difference. I pin gapped these, which is probably stupid, but whatever. I pin gapped them. I put between the two pins in the sweet spot behind the shoulder of this buck and squeeze the trigger and he takes off um, like a fucking bat out of hell. And that's when the sadness starts. It's, I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that sound, that sound that everybody gets excited about. I mean, I, I, I believe that I hit him. Um, I'm not using Luminox or Nocturnals, so I don't see my, my knock in the grass. Um, I have instant regret, instant doubt. Like, did I hit him? Did I not hit him? I can't see my arrow down there. I mean, he took off like I hit him, like, I, I just I just don't know. And um I tell myself that I fucked up. You know, I'm just instantly I'm negative. Like there's no way you did it. You screwed this up. You're an idiot. Why did you do that? You should have waited. You probably missed him. You probably shot over his back. You don't know how far it is. You either shot under him or you shot behind him. You're just such you know, I and so you know, most bow hunters take that shot and then they get real quiet and they listen for that crash. Well, I never heard the crash. Also, part of the reason I never heard the crash is all I can hear is the stupid train nearby, like choo-chooing, chugga-chugga-chugga-choo-choo, and I can't hear shit. And so, you know, there's there's a part of me that goes, well, maybe, maybe you hit him. Maybe you hit him and you just didn't hear the crash because all you can hear is the train. And so I'm trying to sweet talk myself into maybe you're not an idiot but you probably are an idiot, but maybe you're not an idiot. So I let about 20 minutes or so go by and I climb down to look for my arrow and I can't find it. And that's fine. Like I'm just saying to myself, I know where he was standing. Maybe it was a pass through and it's way back here in the grass. And okay, fine. Maybe I don't find it, but I also don't see any blood. Like I saw where he was standing. I know exactly where I shot him. I know exactly the direction that he took off. I don't see blood blood I don't see blood I don't see my arrow and that blows and so I look around on the ground for like five minutes or so maybe 10 minutes eventually I find my arrow um in the direction that he had traveled no blood I find my arrow broken off and from the ground without another arrow with me I make an assumption that there is six to 10 inches, I think 10 inches of arrow broken off inside him. That is a naive assessment based on the later uh, comparison to a full arrow. Uh, I only had three inches, maybe four inches of arrow in that deer. And I 
am instantly heartbroken. Like this is, or no. So, so initially I think, okay, there's a lot of arrow broken in off in him. This is great. I leave the arrow in the grass uh, to where I found it so I can easily find it again. I go back and I tear down everything. I tear down my saddle, uh, my bow. I tear, I just tear, I pack everything up. Cause I'm like, I'm tracking a dead deer. Like he, if there's 10 inches of arrow in this deer, he's done. Even if I hit him in the shoulder, 10 inches of arrows, the other side, maybe I buried it in his other shoulder, get down, grab the arrow, set it to the next one in my quiver and realize you're an idiot. There's three inches of arrow in that motherfucker. That ain't a dead deer. And, uh, instant regret like oh man you fucked up um and about 10 yards after the arrow i find some blood okay this is cool it's not a it's not a a a great blood trail but i find blood like i find blood enough to track him 120 yards before i lose blood he goes up the hill he goes into the neighbor's property and he is making a beeline to standing corn a couple few hundred yards away long story short uh i do lose blood after 120 yards i never find this deer um i don't think the deer's dead he may not live um but he's not he was not dead that day um I'm assuming he went to a safe place, wherever that might be, and he may lay down and he might get an infection and he may die. And that's on me. And I realize that. And I realize that I made a mistake. I have spent so much time watching other people kill big bucks that I wanted to be a part of that too. I wanted to be a part of it because I do put in a lot of work and I do put myself, I work really hard to put myself in positions to to have this opportunity. And I finally had the opportunity and I was so fucking afraid that this deer was going to, for some reason, turn around and walk backwards from the direction that he came. Why? Why would he have done that? He had no clue I was there. I had never stepped foot in the area that he was walking. He had another 20 yards to go before he would have even crossed my scent uh, at all, before he would have even stepped foot in anywhere that I had stepped foot. He had 20 yards to go before he ever got there, but I rushed it. I was in such a hurry to get it done that I made a tremendous mistake. I could have stopped. I could have realized he was going to continue in a straight line in front of me, and at some point he would have walked into a dead tree. That dead tree would have forced him to turn right or left, giving me a 15-yard broadside shot. I later ranged it. He was 19 yards away. So so 19 yards away, actual standing. I pin-gapped him six yards high. I high shoulder shot this son of a bitch and, uh, and wounded one of my target shooters on this property. I ended up shooting the eight that had been moving back and forth across that bean field in front of that camera. He had actually come up the creek and worked his way by the scrape, by the rubs in front of another camera and had put on a little display that I got later and worked from that camera directly into me and was going to continue. Probably my guess is he was going to continue to work his way up the hill into the neighbor's property and perhaps bed up there or work his way into standing corn for food. And if I just would have waited, I'm not it might it could have been. 30 seconds. I should have waited whatever it took. There was no reason for me to rush that shot. And the problem is, in my opinion, I'm, I've am i been watching so many people shoot big bucks that I just wanted to be a part of that. And I didn't necessarily, I don't necessarily think about it in the sense that I wanted to be a part of a community that would recognize me for doing a good job. I just want, like, that's what I'm trying to do too. And I just wanted to make sure that that happened so bad that I just rushed the situation for no reason. And if there's one thing I could encourage anybody that listens to this to do if they find themselves in that situation is to just take a deep breath and think about everything one last time. It's not a rush. There's no, there's no rush. And if he walks away, so what? It's, it would have been way better for him to go backwards and walk out of my life forever than for me to know that I wasted that opportunity and injured that deer. 
I would much rather know that he walked away unscathed, never knowing I was there. Or let's better yet, I would have rather him winded me and left forever than me rushing that shot and shooting him in the shoulders. If there's one takeaway from this, please, when you find yourself in that situation where you think it's all going to come together, just take a deep breath and, and, and play the whole thing out in your brain real quick as it only takes a fraction of a second. Is he going to go backwards? Probably not. Is he going to go left or right? Most likely. Is he going to come straight at me? Perhaps. But even if he would have walked in a perfectly straight line at me, I'd have been better off shooting him directly center of the chest than in the shoulder. And I just rushed it. I would have been able to see better in one more minute, two more minutes, even if it would have taken 10 minutes for him to come out of that bush. The sun would have come up. My thermals would have continued to rise up the hill behind me. The wind was in my face. He would have never fucking known I was there. But I was in such a hurry to shoot that buck and get on with my life. I should have just drunk it all in. I should have just drank it all in, drunk it all in. I should have drank it all in and enjoyed the moment. And I've heard so many people say that. Enjoy the moment, man. Just watch him be a deer and do deer things and know that you can grab your bow and draw back and aim and shoot. You've proven to yourself by practicing all year long that you can do the fun- the mechanical aspect of what it is that you need to do. But when you're in such a hurry and you make that mistake, it's disgusting. It ma- makes me sick to my stomach. Like I keep watching those videos of him hitting that screen moving in front of that camera before he worked his way into me and it makes me sick to my stomach. So please, anybody that's listening to this, if you find yourself in that scenario where everything is finally coming together and you know you're going to get a shot on a mature buck that absolutely tickles you and makes you happy and is so you're going to be so thankful, don't rush it. Enjoy that last minute because it might only be 60 seconds that he's It takes for him to make that final move to get into perfect position, but let him get into perfect position. It's so, it would have been so much more worth it for me to wait 60 more seconds. I don't think I would have screwed up. I may not have guessed the distance right, but I still think had he come out and presented me with a little bit better shot, I might have been able to say, Ooh, man, now that I can see better because it's, it's an additional one minute later. I can see his entire bro- his entire body broadside or whatever. I would have been able to make a better assessment. But with him tucked in those bushes in the dark and it was already dark and I just had to guess, I made a bad guess and I and I rushed it and I should have just waited. I might have been able to say, oh, he's a top pinner. But I just had to guess because I was in such a hurry for no reason at all. So if there's any takeaway, just take it all in. Take your time. Take another breath, relax, and let the scenario play out naturally and don't force it. Force shit. Don't force shit. Also, don't force it. Um, I think we're going to continue to do these podcasts more regularly. Thanks, everybody that listens. I, people are still downloading, so that's kind of a surprise to me, but uh, considering I haven't put anything out since March. So welcome to October the 19th. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks. Bye.